this live on YouTube before we get okay. started. Okay, great. Volume all right? Yep, sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, and before we kick off, I just want to let a couple uh, folks know, uh, first of all, thanks to everyone for joining us today. This is being live streamed to YouTube. Uh, so you will be able to see the recording of today's press conference after uh, we're done here. We will have a press release that has additional details about the program. Uh, we have several wonderful speakers who will be talking to you about the work they did on this important legislation. If you are a member of the press and you've got a question for the Q&A that will follow, please send me a direct message uh, with your question and we'll make sure to queue that up during the Q&A. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And with that, I'll kick it over to Assessor Kagi. Thanks, Scott. Um, hello, I'm Assessor Fritz Kagi, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the launch of the Affordable Housing Special Assessment Program. The people you see gathered here with us were instrumental in making this happen. Um, the lack of affordable housing is a crisis throughout our nation. It's a leading cause of homelessness. And the COVID-19 epidemic has put a fine point on how important it is to make sure that we, as a society, are caring for the basic needs of our citizens and neighbors. As elected officials serving Cook County, I know that we're all proud to say Cook County is the first county in Illinois to launch this program. By way of background, this affordable housing incentive program is similar to the Class 9 incentive program, but it goes far beyond it in many ways. The criteria for entry are broader, and the options for participation are broader. Class 9 was strictly limited to housing providers who provided 35% or more of their units at affordable rent levels, but this program recognizes different tiers of affordability at 15, 20, and 35%. This program also has special incentives to encourage the creation of affordable housing in areas of the county that have been lacking in low income rental housing. This will uh, allow more residents to live where they work and spend time. The applications are up on the website now at cookcountyassessor.com slash affordable dash housing. Applications are designed to be all electronic and paperless. Part of making our property tax system more fair and accessible is making it easier to access incentives just like this one. Modernizing the technology used in incentive applications allows for remote access where you work or live. We're excited and hopeful that this program will stimulate even greater participation and thereby help a broader spectrum of people in need. So you're about to hear from a host of legislators, leaders, and advocates who saw a problem and developed a, a solution to address it. So I'd like to welcome our first speaker today, Senator Sarah Feigenholz. Sarah? Thank you, Assessor Katie. It's great to be here. It's an exciting day for all of us. Um, and I'm State Senator Sarah Feigenholz. Happy to be here with all of you, especially the housing advocates and my colleagues um, who've been waiting for this day. It has been a day in the making for many years. Uh, and I know how hard everyone has worked. In my district, throughout Chicago, throughout Cook County, and in neighborhoods from Uptown to Pilsen, Hyde Park to Rogers Park, generations of families are being uprooted due to rising rents and cost. But today, we celebrate something coming out of the assessor's office that addresses this specifically in a variety of housing markets. And uh, this omnibus bill and class nine especially creates incentives for property managers and developers who will invest where affordable housing in our county is needed the most. This, in this iteration of class nine, we can preserve or create over uh, it, we could get up to 15,200 units in Cook County in the next 10 years. So I am really excited about this. Um, it's been great working with everybody and to be here to celebrate the day that it launches. And speaking of launching, I'm going to hand it over to my dear friend and colleague, Senator Ann Gillespie. Take it away, Ann. Senator Gillespie, you're on mute.
Is this, am I off from now? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Senator Feigenholz. Um, good morning, my name is Ann Gillespie and I represent the 27th Senate District. I'm thrilled to join my colleagues today to announce the kickoff of the Affordable Housing Special Assessment Program. Thank you to Assessor Kagi and your team. You've been great partners throughout this process. And to my colleagues in the General Assembly, it was so, so gratifying to have this legislation passed unanimously in both chambers and without the coordination and help um, of this team on the call today, it would not have happened. This program will offer property tax relief to spur the development and rehabilitation of affordable housing units across Illinois. In the wake of the economic fallout from the pandemic, the need for affordable housing in all communities across the state is even greater. I'm so proud that Cook County is the county that's gonna kick it off. Creating options for working families in every neighborhood will diversify and grow our communities in a way that works for everyone and helps our small businesses by making it easier for their workers to live closer to their jobs. I encourage local developers to apply for this program so we can build an equitable future for housing for all Illinoisans in every corner of the state. Next up is my esteemed colleague in the Senate, Leader Maddie Hunter. Welcome, Maddie. Well, thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Gillespie. Thank you so much, um, Assessor Kagi. It's been a pleasure working with you and your team on this important uh, measure. I am pleased to be here for the launch of the application for the new Affordable Housing Special Assessment Program. Um, today was made possible by House Bill 2621 which uh, I sponsored along with my wonderful colleagues who are here with me, Senators Gillespie and Feigenholz. We all work tremendously hard on this legislation and it feels amazing uh, actually to see a cause champion for several years finally come into fruition. This bill creates uh, several monetary incentives for residential developers to create affordable housing with multiple components aimed at strengthening our affordable housing laws and promoting diversity and equity in our state's housing stock. Specifically, the measure creates the COVID-19 Affordable Housing Grant Program, which will supplement affordable housing development that qualifies for federal tax credits throughout the state so that we can better leverage millions of dollars in federal and private monies to create even more affordable housing units. We know that this kind of legislation was necessary even prior to COVID-19 pandemic. So it's great that um, it came to be implemented at a time when many were at risk of, of eviction and having trouble finding housing. Affordable housing is a cause I've advocated for for my whole career. And I hope that this affordable and equitable options prevail long after this pandemic is gone. I believe our legislation is a key component to helping communities stay afloat in the midst of the ongoing pandemic and the way to keep families in their homes. I am so grateful for the work my colleagues and I did and all of the support we received from advocates like Bob Palmer and others. Thank you guys, really appreciate you. And next up, we'll have Representative Gazzardi, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. I'm so excited to be here with you all. My name is Will Gazzardi. I'm the state rep from the 39th district on the northwest side of Chicago. Um, my colleagues have explained uh, a lot of what the bill does and have given credit where it's due to all the incredible partners who help us make it happen. But just to put a little bit of sort of color or perspective on it, uh, you know, in my community, we have a lot of affordable housing. Uh, and it's terrific and it provides great opportunities for residents to stay in their homes. But of course, what happens is, you know, as neighborhoods grow and thrive, the home values in those communities start rising. And in order for housing to remain affordable, the rents can't continue to rise in, uh, in accordance with the, the home values. And so there's tremendous pressure, right? As property taxes grow, home values rise. Um, there's tremendous pressure on affordable housing providers to keep those units affordable while still being able to meet their rising property tax obligations. So this bill addresses, I think, one of the really uh, key drivers to the loss of affordability across Chicago and across the county, which is these rising property tax values as communities grow and as home, uh, as, as property uh, values rise. So it's, it's a really critical mechanism for us to solve one of the key challenges that's facing affordability 
uh, in our city and in our county. Uh, I'm really uh, grateful to have been a part of this process as the House sponsor of the bill and the, the chair of the Housing Committee uh, in the House, um, to have worked with the incredible senators we heard from and uh, the other colleagues in the House of Representatives. But, but also, before I hand it over, I do want to give credit to Assessor Kagi. Um, I would say that the assessor came into office with just an absolute laser focus on equity, on making the property tax system more fair, more equitable, and using it to protect the needs of the most vulnerable people uh, in our county. And his focus on equity has made um, some wealthy and powerful people uncomfortable, people who used to get unfairly good deals from the property tax system. They haven't liked Assessor Kagi's approach. But for the rest of us, for folks who were not benefiting from the insider dealings of the office previously, uh, the system is getting more fair. Um, it's getting more equitable. It's delivering results for our community. So I just want to thank the assessor for his relentless focus on equity and fairness in this system um, and his partnership on this legislation and partnership on implementing this legislation um, is going to make all of our communities stronger. So a tremendous uh, amount of gratitude to the assessor. And then also a tremendous gratitude to our next speaker, uh, really the preeminent housing champion in the Illinois House of Representatives, uh, a colleague, a friend, someone who I believe is going to take her, uh, her focus on housing and on equity uh, to Congress and continue that fight in Washington, my dear friend and colleague, Representative Delia Ramirez. Thank you for that very kind introduction, Representative Gazzardi, and for all your work as chairman of our housing committee. I also want to thank Leader Hunter, Senator Gillespie, and Senator Feigenholz for spearheading this critical work in the Senate and partnering with us in the House on such a comprehensive, affordable housing package for that session. As Rep. Gazzardi mentioned, since arriving to the General Assembly, it's been one of my top goals to make housing an absolute priority in the state legislature. And over the last few years, we've made significant strides at advancing housing issues, including extensive COVID rental assistance for renters and small landlords, dedicating hundreds of millions of dollars from capital in ARPA for the development of affordable housing development and expanding homeless prevention services. But we know we still have more work to do. We have to continue to find creative ways to ensure that every member of our community has housing stability. This is why I'm excited to be here with you today as, at this press conference, as we launch an innovative approach to provide property tax relief while ensuring that we continue to build and maintain affordable housing. This property tax relief program for those who develop and maintain affordable housing will be a key component of comprehensive affordable legislation for many, many legislation pieces to come. I was proud to be a co-sponsor and champion this legislation as it will help Illinois continue to lead on making housing accessible and affordable for all. We have many mom and pop landlords who are struggling with rising property tax bills while keeping the rental units affordable. It is our hope that this legislation will help provide some relief to them so that they can keep their units and community affordable to long-term residents. Look, we talk a lot about providing property tax relief in the General Assembly. And I am proud to say that this program will deliver just that by incentivizing practices that keep our communities affordable. I look forward to working with Assessor Kagi and my colleagues here to make sure that the implementation of this program produces our intended outcomes to provide relief and expand affordable housing. Thank you all for your time today and for your continued partnership in working towards housing stability for all. With that, I'd like to introduce to you one of our key community leaders who has been instrumental in making this legislation possible. Help me welcome Allison Clements, the Executive Director of Illinois Housing Council. Allison. Thank you, Leader Ramirez. Uh, good morning. My name is Allison Clements, and I am the Executive Director of the Illinois Housing Council. We are a statewide nonprofit membership organization that represents over 250 private businesses from across the state of Illinois who are actively involved in the construction and preservation of affordable housing. Illinois' affordable housing challenges were significant before COVID-19 hit, and the pandemic has ensured they are at crisis level. 
In order to rebuild our county and our state, we need to invest in proven solutions to create more affordable housing in our communities. The property tax incentive program is one of those solutions. This critical new tool will incentivize investment in affordable housing development throughout our communities. The program passed with unanimous bipartisan support in the Illinois General Assembly, and we are grateful to the state legislators and partner organizations who are here with us today who helped to advocate for the development and passage of this important program. And we're also grateful to Assessor Kagi and his team at the Cook County Assessor's Office for their collaboration in launching the program's implementation. These new property tax policies provide the county with an excellent tool to promote investment, expand the tax base, and serve the affordable housing needs of residents across a variety of housing markets in Cook County. In higher cost housing communities, the incentives will encourage property owners to keep rents affordable in at least 15% of the units in a newly constructed or rehabbed multifamily building. And in lower cost markets struggling with disinvestment, the incentives will encourage owners to make improvements to their properties, benefiting both the building's residents and the community. And this new program will also provide long-term financial stability and predictability for affordable housing providers who develop housing that benefits seniors, working families, and our most vulnerable populations, such as those struggling with homelessness. Affordable housing is an investment in the future, and we commend everyone here today for their role in the exciting launch of this new program. And I'm proud to be joined in the mission of affordable housing with our final speaker, Stacy Young, President and CEO of the Community Investment Corporation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Allison. I'm Stacy Young from Community Investment Corporation, or CIC. We're a nonprofit lender and we specialize in financing affordable rental housing, especially the unsubsidized or naturally occurring affordable housing in historically disinvested neighborhoods. First again, a huge thank you to all the amazing leaders behind this. I, you know, I have to say it again, Senators Feigen, Holtz, Hunter, and Gillespie, and Representatives Ramirez and Gazzardi. And of course, Assessor Kagi and his team, Cook County and the City of Chicago are also great partners, plus an incredibly diverse group of advocates. In addition to Allison uh, from the Illinois Housing Council, it's rare to see for-profit owners and industry groups alongside nonprofits and grassroots advocates, including Again, aside from IHC, the Metropolitan Planning Council, Enterprise Community Partners, and you've heard his name before, the dogged Bob Palmer from Housing Action Illinois. This unlikely coalition came together because this policy addresses challenges, again, as Allison just said, in such a broad range of markets and buildings. It's going to drive investment in disinvested neighborhoods and drive affordability in rising markets. It also works for both government-assisted subsidized buildings and the unsubsidized naturally occurring stock in the neighborhoods. And those existing unsubsidized buildings make up the vast majority of affordable rental. We can't just stand by and watch tenants get hurt while those units get lost, either to deterioration in the lower cost neighborhoods or to rising rents in the higher cost areas. This policy encourages owners to rehab and preserve what we already have, which is just so critical. And of course, I can't close without a huge shout out to all of the great partners at the Preservation Compact. That's a policy collaborative housed here at CIC. Those partners worked really hard for this new legislation. Thank you again for the opportunity. It's thrilling to see this become real and help keep more units affordable and in good condition. And now I'll hand it back to Assessor Katie. Thank you again so much to you and your team for making this real. Well, thanks so much, Stacy. And a big thank you to all the legislators and partners who are here with us today. So let's look at uh, the next steps for those who wanna take advantage of this program. Uh, we have two things that uh, we want people to know. First, go to our website. And once you're there, fill out parts one and two of the application if you've completed the required expenditures and the building is in service. You can do this by going to cookcountyassessor.com slash affordable dash housing. And we should be sharing the screen with you here. If everything is not complete and in service, but you have the plans in place for the property, you should just fill out part one. We're asking the initial round of applications to be filled out by March 31st to ensure that it will be applied to the second installment of the tax bill available later this year. Second, 
We have the first informational webinar on February 15th. Uh, this, you'll be able to get your questions answered here. And the first webinar is geared toward property owners who've taken advantage of the class nine incentive. To sign up for that, please email assessor.affordablehousing at cookcountyil.gov. Um, and we should be sharing that with you here too. We have a series of webinars in February and March that will be announced very soon, and we look forward to having you there. Um, and I wanna thank again, all the amazing community leaders who participated in this launch today. And with that, I'm gonna open it up for questions. If you have a question, uh, please send a message to Scott Smith, uh, who will queue it up for us here. Okay, thanks everyone. And we do have a couple questions. Uh, I'm gonna take the uh, first question, um, actually is gonna be from uh, Alex Nitkin. Um, actually, let me tell you what, I'm gonna take the first question, which is uh, specific to uh, affordable housing from Ted Slowick at the Southtown. Um, he's got a question about, um, that I think uh, Senator Gillespie uh, wants to take um, about uh, what can be done to address a lack of affordable housing in many communities, uh, specifically uh, citing an ins uh, instance in Tinley Park where a proposal for affordable housing was denied uh, due to public outcry. Uh, so Senator Gillespie, I believe you wanted to take that one. Yes, thank you, Scott. Um, the legislation that we passed also includes some provisions making uh, it um, the requirements for all communities to submit affordable housing plans and to act on those plans a little bit tighter. So we clarified that the home rule exemption does not apply to this provision so that all communities do have to submit uh, affordable housing plans. And we added some enforcement authority with the attorney general's office to ensure that those plans are, are done. Um, so in that regard, uh, we should be seeing more activity across the state um, as everyone now has to comply with those requirements. Okay, thank you. And then we do have two questions from Alex Nickin at the Daily Line. Uh, the first question is for Representative Gazzardi. Um, do you see legislation on rent control um, happening in the next session? And do you see that as complementary policy to this legislation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that's an issue that I've been working on as many of you know for quite a long time. Um, I think that we need as many tools in our tool belt as possible to keep uh, to keep families in their homes and to keep rents affordable. Um, I'll certainly continue working on the various pieces of legislation that I've been advocating for in that area. But I think what we have here today is um, we've seen tremendous consensus around this project from members of the House, members of the Senate, and from folks like Assessor Kagey, uh, all of whom really view this mechanism of uh, lowering the property tax assessment for affordable housing as a great tool to make sure that folks have affordable rents in their communities. And Representative Gazzardi, we have another question for you from Alex. Uh, do you plan on pursuing legislation this session to legalize additional dwelling units statewide? And is that also a complementary policy to this legislation? Yeah, it's another great question. And um, I, I think there's been a lot of interest in accessory dwelling units. I think we've seen the pilot program here in the city of Chicago um, have a great deal of success. Uh, so it's, it's something that I'm very excited about. And um, I certainly can't speak for anyone else on the call. And, uh, uh, but I, I can say personally, that it's an issue I really believe in. And I, um, I hope that we can get some legislation done in Springfield to help uh, bring those kinds of units to communities across the state. And if I, if I could just pipe in on that, sometimes we get questions about, well, how do accessory dwelling units affect you know, the property tax picture? And basically, you know, the way we see it as our data team, it will take several years to evaluate what the additional impact an ADU has above uh, where things have been before. So generally, you know, it's in, the, in terms of the work that we do, we have to observe the market to see what happens if, if ADUs are introduced. Of course, there are many homes with coach houses and uh, attic apartments and basement apartments now, and it's just part of the landscape now, and we, we don't see any particular reason why uh, that would be any different in the future from the way it already is now. Okay, and it looks like uh, we've handled all the questions for today. 
Um, so I want to just, uh, first of all, thank all of our, our speakers, our legislators, and our community advocates who, um, as you've heard, made this all possible. Um, this is an incredibly exciting piece of legislation and what happens when folks get together to solve a common problem. Um, again, I want to make sure people know cookcountyassessor.com slash affordable dash housing. Uh, we'll put that link in the chat, but if you are watching us on YouTube, you can access that link from the cookcountyassessor.com homepage. Just look for the link for affordable housing programs. And we're asking people to sign in with those applications by March 31st, uh, just to ensure that we get the registration going and everything gets taken care of to get this powerful incentive to the people who need it most. Um, and with that, I'll bring this event to a close. We will be sending out a press release with details and more background information about this legislation in just a bit. Thanks everyone for joining us and have a great day.